Hi everyone, it's Cindy from Cindy's Art. Today I am going to tackle painting a flower pot that I took a picture of last year in the summertime and I love the colors. So I'm going to start off with my arches paper, my Holbein paint, and I am going to sketch out this painting lightly with a pencil and then I'm going to use masking fluid in order to mark a lot of where the highlights are and I do that with the flowers. I want to make sure that by the time I finish this painting you can see um, the lightest portions of it and so one way to do that is to use masking fluid. So right now I am working with Aurelian yellow, some opera, and if you mix it with Aurelian it makes a beautiful vibrant orange and I am using a little bit of a sap green and I'm just going around and I'm uh, putting in some of the highlights of this painting and then I'll start working with a little bit of the darks to define the picture. I'm going to add in a little bit more of this copper color and I did that by using some red and then some ultramarine blue and I did not blend it much. I let it blend in a little bit on the paper. It was wet and when I add that red in, I like the vibrancy. And then, um, you know, when you look at a copper pot, it has a little bit of a burnished color and I achieved that by using the ultramarine blue. I let that dry really good and then I am going to start to add in my darks. One of the things you can do to create a rich black without using black is to use burnt sienna, then some permanent green, and then some phthalo blue or ultramarine blue. And when you mix those together, you can get a really super dark, um, you know, brownish color or blackish color. I even sometimes will add in a little bit of a red and it gives me another type of black. So black is never fully black, white is never fully white. You want to look for the colors beyond um, you know, what you normally would see or your brain is telling you is there. So basically I am just filling in some greens. I've used some of my yellows in my palette along with my blues to mix these greens up. I really enjoy them. Um, and I'm just filling this in and working around and there is a grayish blue color which is the masking fluid. So as you're looking at this and I'm painting around even where this red is, um, you can see that there's this grayish color. That's the masking fluid and once I get most of this picture laid out, I will take that masking fluid off. I tried a few things in this picture. One of them was splattering um, for these stones. And I used some purple, some phthalo blue. Uh, I used a little bit of orange and yellow in there. And that I really love the colors, but I can't say that I felt really great about the, um, the way that it looked. And getting different textures like your splattering, scratching, whatever it is, that's what's going to keep people interested in your picture. So getting a variety of textures is a really good idea. So as this picture moves on, I changed that stonework a little bit, but I like to tell you to try different things. And you saw when I did that splatter, I laid down paper towels, and then I uh, got paint on a paintbrush, and I tapped it on another paintbrush. It splatters dots on your picture. So cover everything else up because it'll make a mess, but it's a lot of fun.
bringing out the vibrancy of the colors by um, working with some very dark palettes. You can see the colors that I'm adding. Alizarin Crimson is the red. I mix that with an ultramarine blue and a little bit of phthalo blue. And uh, that's a sienna color that's on my palette. That's the brown. And uh, basically, I'm using these colors in order to develop the depth of it. I need someone to be able to look or walk into this picture. And the way that I can do it is to make sure that I've got good depth going on. And where the focal point is, I need to make sure that that is really bright and it's popping. One personal goal I set for this painting was for me to be able to paint it and my colors not to get muddy and for me to be able to see nice, bright, vibrant colors um, by the time I finished. And I did achieve that. And one of the ways that you can achieve that is every single time you pick up another color, dip that brush into clean water and then wipe it off on a sponge and then go and pick up fresh paint on your palette or dip it into the paint that you're using and then dip it into um, your, you know, your palette, mix it up a little bit and then put it on the picture. So I love vibrant colors. You can see this orange that I'm creating. I'm um, using alizarin cr uh, crimson along with an aurelian yellow. Aurelian yellow is super duper bright. Um, and the other one I use is a yellow deep. Um, and so I'm layering that up. I, I do like to, I tend to want to put my light um, work down first. Then I like to add some dark for some definition. And then I like to go back and wherever I want the person to look, I add a ton of color in there. And that's just me. I, that's saturation. Saturation is how much uh, color is inside of that object. Next, I'm taking my finger right there, and you can see I am rubbing off all of that masking fluid. So now you can see where all these whites are, and I'm only going to add a little bit of color um, to make it look like uh, to make it look like it is the light. One of the ways I do that is by using yellow and um, a touch of green in there, and then the flowers. I'm just going to develop um, by adding a little bit of shadow in the center and I kind of work my way around the painting just to finish up uh, these leaves, make sure that the dark is really dark because this is more where my focal point is. So I need the darks dark, I need the lights light, and it needs to have the most amount of color in this region than anything else in the painting. The rest of it can look duller, but where that focal point is, where I want people to focus, it needs to have the brightest amount of color in the entire painting. In the shot that I took, there was this beautiful um, garden fence that was behind there, and it was made out of stone. And so I put that in there, I added a little bit of, sh of um, shadows in, and then I'm just finishing up with details, whatever I wanted to do to basically make me feel satisfied with the painting. And normally I would not paint all of the words, like this is the word flowers and something else below. I wouldn't normally do that where you could read that. Um, but I was enjoying this painting. Sometimes when I'm painting, I'm, re I'm relaxing, I'm enjoying the process, and so I want to add in that extra detail. I don't think you always have to. I think um, keeping it loose and keeping it fun is just as great.
I'm finishing up on a few touches, just some shadows, so I can make sure I've got some depth added in. When you take a look at the final photo, there's a lot of vibrancy um, in it. I would like to see your work. Feel free to share that with me on Facebook, on Instagram, um, here on YouTube. Give me a comment. I don't know if you could insert your uh, picture in my community page, but I want to thank you for joining me today. I would love to be with you again in the future. Uh, please hit subscribe if you enjoy this video and like it. That'll help me with uh, views. And uh, I've listed a few others that you may want to take a look at, some other videos for um, painting. And we will see you next time. Thanks, guys.